Good morning, wizard. So for the morning three of Wizard Academy, it is Wednesday. I hope everybody is wide awake this morning. Miss Shelby has a, a friend in today. We've got Kristen. Miss Kristen is going to kick us off and get things started. So I hope that everybody is ready because this is going to be a fun one. And I'm going to give him a little space for this. <laughs> Judging by the looks of that, I'm going to give him some space and we'll let him get us started. We'll let a few other folks get logged in. Remember Wizard Academy, grab your Wizard Academy bag, grab your art supply bag. We are going to need that for a couple of the later activities. And we've got a messy one coming up. So some paper towels or wipes would be good to have on hand. Okay, so those are the things you can gather while we wait for a couple other folks to get logged on and then we'll let Mr. Christian take over. Alrighty guys. So once again, my name is Mr. Christian and today I'm going to be showing you just a couple of really cool experiments that really tie everything together with wizard camp. So my first experiment, it is something that has to do with the incendio charm. So if you remember from Harry Potter, the incendio charm has to do with fire. So you are casting fire, right? Well, in this case, the easiest way to do it for us is to actually through engineering, we made our very own flamethrower. So we're gonna need your help. So when I'm ready, I'm gonna ask you to do the incendio charm. So just yell incendio, and then that should get this to work. So what I have here, is I don't have ketchup. I know it looks like a bottle of ketchup, but this actually contains a very, very flammable powder called lycopodium powder. It is organic. It's made from dried plant material. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this into my plastic tube here. Now, as you can see, my tube is attached to a lighter. So if you remember, there is something called a fire triangle. You've probably heard that before. You need three things for a good fire. You need a fuel source. Check, we've got it. You need an ignition source. Check, we've got it right here. And you need oxygen. So that's where I come into this. And I'm actually gonna take my mask off to do this one. So here we go, guys. We're gonna do incendio on three. Ready? One. My lighter going. There we go. One, two, three. Incendio. All right. Hopefully that came across pretty well. I'm actually going to do one more just because this one's really fun. So, and Michelle be scared over there. So, <laughs> shoot it at the camera. <laughs> shoot it at the camera. Okay, here we go. Ready, guys? We're going to do incendio once again. I'm going to need your help. So incendio on three, and this lighter is really going to need some troubles here. Hopefully we have enough to give us one more go. Maybe. Oh, come on. I should have brought a spare. Well, we have a defective lighter. That's okay because we're actually going to be doing some more fire. So what? right here. We have a propane torch, right? And we have a mysterious green liquid. So if you remember from the Harry Potter movies, there is something called blue powder. So if that sounds familiar, that's because it's when they're in the fireplace and they're getting ready to go to Diagon Alley and they throw that powder down and it turns the fire green, right? And then somebody, I can't remember who, but somebody messes up and instead of saying Diagon Alley, they say diagonally and they just go like that. So, yeah, is it Harry Potter? Okay. So, like I said, I have a propane torch and I have this green liquid here. Now this green liquid is something called copper chloride. Copper chloride is a salt and it's dissolved in alcohol in here. Now, copper chloride is going to make our fire turn green, okay? And also, here's a fun little history lesson. When we got the Statue of Liberty, right? The Statue of Liberty was a gift from France and it was copper. Right, so it looked really shiny, like a brand new penny at first, and then over time, it has turned green, right, because of oxidation. So that's why copper chloride here turns our fire green. Here we go, guys. 
Ready? Three, two, one. So, hopefully, that's cool. This comes across really well. All right. We're going to do more incendio. It's starting to smell like a barbecue up here. All right. Here we go. Ready, guys? Yep. In studio. In studio. Woo! There we go. Now look. Nice to meet you all. So I'm glad you loved that. That was pretty awesome. Thank you, Mr. Christian, for joining us. That was fun. All right. Now everybody's awake this morning, right? <laughs> okay. So we need our Wizard Academy bag. That's what we need today, right? And our art supply guide. We are gonna get a little messy, so let's have some paper towels handy. Grab a few paper towels or wipes to have nearby. Okay. And let's start with Care of Magical Creatures. So if you reach in your bag, you should have a bag that has an egg in it, a big plastic egg and a chart, a colorful little chart. So this is the bag we want. This is our Hatch a Dragon bag for Care of Magical Creatures. So when you dig for that and find it, pull that out. You can set your chart aside and your egg, all right? And this is an easy but a fun one. And you get to observe your egg, the color of your egg, okay? And then, let's see if he's, Letting people in, he took the, let's say we've got, we can crack our egg open and see what you've got inside. Oh, mine is secured over here with some tape so it didn't pop open in transit. So if yours is not opening, look for a clear piece of tape so you can peel that off. There we go. And now, there you go. So crack it open and see what you got. Check out your dragon. So compare him to my chart here and identify the species of my dragon. Let's see, looks like I have, hmm, he looks most like Draco Aqua, the water dragon. So I got a water dragon. I see you got green dragons, goldens. See what you've got there? Use your wormling and egg identification chart. Nice, Anthony. And, and see what you got. Crack, crack it open, observe your egg, observe your dragon, and match it up with your chart to see which species you have. All right, so that was inside my egg. I'm gonna tuck that back inside of my egg. Or you can just keep them out and keep you company today. Maybe I'll put them over here with my mandrake. Let's see, did my mandrake make it? I'll put them over here with my mandrake. There we go. Okay. And I'm gonna set the rest of this aside. So I have some space to get a little messy. Oh, and almost forgot, you have in your bag with um, all of the papers or cards, you've got an adoption certificate. It would help if I held that upright. Whoops, wait a second, that's my Graduation certificate, wrong one. Let's grab, so you have an adoption certificate. 
Certificate of Adoption. And yours might be a full sheet or a half sheet. But look at that. There you go. So you guys, very good. Anthony found his. So fill out your Certificate of Adoption. You need to put the date. And this is done with, today would be the 15th day of July 2020 and write your name and the species of your dragon was officially adopted and joyfully welcomed into a forever home by and that's where you're going to put your name from this day forward they shall share a bond of love and trust and be lifelong companions so complete your official certificate of adoption for your dragon and you can give it give it a name so you have the species name but you can also put the um, the name of your dragon you give your your dragon any name you choose and fill that in there okay i have a question and then what are the other papers that you have in your bag that's on this stick card stock we're going to need this for the next activity it's got purple shapes on it. This is going to be your chocolate frog box. So we're gonna fish that out of here. And you have a, a bag that has a paper cup. It has a plastic bag. It has a, a little Ziploc bag with some plaster and a plastic frog mold, some melting chocolate, a plastic spoon, and a popsicle stick. So lots of goodies in here. Fish that bag out. That's what we will use next, everybody. So we'll get that out of the way. So here you see the plastic frog mold. All right. We've got this triangular piece of plastic here is a frosting bag. And the plaster we're gonna set aside for now. We're not gonna use that just yet. You've got your paper cup, you will need that. Hello, um, I need eight portions of fish. Okay. And we still need our melting chocolate. I'm gonna check on mine here. Chocolate frogs. So we pulled out 
the, um, it was in a big bag. We had a paper cup. We had a clear plastic frog mold. All right. We have a treat bag. You can set that aside. You don't need that till the end. Our chocolate, our melting chocolate. And this is a frosting bag. So this frosting bag we're going to use um, in a little bit here to work with our chocolate. This is going to come in handy. So I don't that. have a um, yeah. frosting bag. What was that, Anthony? I don't have the frosting bag. You don't have the frosting bag? That's okay. You don't need it. We can even use um, just the Ziploc bag. Um, the Ziploc bag works, works oh, yeah. well. Okay, so if you don't have that funny triangular piece of plastic, the frosting bag, don't fret over that. Um, it's just to, to squeeze it in and isn't, it's not really necessary. It's just an extra to make it easier. All right, so you have your, these little chocolate drops. That's our melting chocolate. And you can put it into your paper cup. There we go. Thank you. All right, so you can put your melting chocolate into your paper cup. That's going to um, give you a safe place to warm it. All right. Let's do the right one, Miss Shelby. Okay. Thank you guys for bearing with us through our technical challenges this morning. Uh, starting off with fire, we <laughs> did things a little differently. Um, do I need to power it up, Matt? Okay. All right, and I think they were able to hear me. All right, we'll get this out of the way. Okay, so we were pouring our melting chocolate into our paper cup so that you can head over to the microwave. And I would recommend it's not a lot of chocolate. Okay, you don't need a whole lot of heat. You're gonna wanna take your plastic spoon or your popsicle stick, whichever you prefer. Take your cup, put it in the microwave, set it for 10 seconds, and then take it out and give it a stir since it would not be good to be operating a microwave right next to our cameras in this tiny little space and doing that high electricity draw. I've got a, a warmer here, so I'm just melting it. Um, in a little pot, but you guys will just pop this in the microwave 10 seconds. You want to give it a stir after that, okay? And then check it. If, um, if it, it look, probably after 10 seconds, it's going to look maybe about like that, still a, a thicker texture. So put it in, do another 10 seconds, okay? And then stir again. So it takes the cocoa butter in the chocolate, the um, fats in the cocoa butter, the lipids in the cocoa butter, that's what melts and gets nice and smooth when we add a little bit of heat, okay? So um, it doesn't take a lot, um, but you will want to make sure that you're stirring it and moving it around because it's getting those lipids, it's getting them to spread out. That's gonna really give you the consistency that you need, okay? All right, so once you get that, so you may do another 10 seconds and check. You see, you want a, a smooth consistency. You don't want it to be lumpy. So stir, 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 okay? And then you're gonna to wanna to have your plastic frog mold handy. You want him to lie down upside down like a bowl so that we can add our chocolate in. So 
Set him down on his back. And then you can use your frosting bag or your Ziploc bag that your chocolate was in. There you go, Look, it's looking good. Let's see, check that. Oh, that's looking good. Okay, so you wanna get it to where you can um, scoop it out or pour it out and get it into your frosting bag or your Ziploc bag. All right. And it's not too hot so it won't burn the plastic. You're okay to do that. But we're gonna get that in there. You can just use the, so you can use the spoon to scoop it out of there. See if I can get some of the lumps out of mine. All right. This little warmer is not as powerful as a microwave. So you're probably getting a, a better consistency here. All right, so I'm gonna scoop this in and I wanna get it down towards the bottom of the bag. Okay. Oop, and I'm making a mess. You all have been warned. Okay, so that's it. There we go. The chocolate smells good. It does smell good, doesn't it? Better than that vinegar that you didn't like, huh? Yeah, mine smells like um like marshmallow. Mmm, you smell that sweetness? All right, so now you can, if you're doing this in your Ziploc bag, do the same thing. Just get it down towards a corner, okay? And then you're going to take your scissors and snip off the tip of the bag, and that's going to give you an opening to let the chocolate out, okay? These frosting bags, or even with a Ziploc bag, you know, if you were trying to do something really fine with a very small line and lots of detail, you would cut it very close to the tip. So it's just, just a small amount is coming out at a time. But for what we're doing, you can make a bigger hole. Just snip off the corner of your frosting bag or your Ziploc bag, and then you can just squeeze it out like you do your toothpaste in the morning, okay? So just squeeze that out and put it in the bottom of your frog. So fill up his back. Okay. Mine is still a little thick here. So I'm gonna use the tip to just smear it around. Make sure you get it down into the eyes there. There we go. Spread it around. Oh, it does smell delicious. Even if it looks a little goopy here. And nice thing about um, the emulsifiers in, in milk chocolate, the lipids that we were talking about, the fats, the cocoa, the cocoa butter, is it firms up at a, um, even at room temperature, it'll start to firm up. You can speed it up by putting it in the fridge. There we go. I'm just going to get that into the legs. And um, depending on how much um, chocolate, because it really wants to, uh, the, the um, adhesive properties of the chocolate, right? Remember we were talking about cohesion and adhesion. Um, the adhesive properties of the chocolate, it really wants to stay on the sides of the cup or the bowl or whatever you're using. So um, depending on how much of that you were able to scrape out with your spoon, how thorough you were able to be, um, you don't have to get it all the way up to the top. You may find that um, if you're having trouble, just try to get it down as far as you can because you'll see the shape of that, uh, that frog if you get it all the way down into the eyes, okay? So there you go, nice work.
Nice work, guys. Perfect. Okay. And then you can use the back of your spoon or yeah, you can I use. Did. I did. I did it. Yes, like that. there you go. That's exactly. So you can use that technique. You can use the back of your spoon or you can use your popsicle stick to just kind of even that out so it'll sit nice and flat. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to grab another paper towel, clean up my edge a bit, and we can let that harden and then you get a treat. For all of your hard work this morning, you'll get to enjoy that in a little bit once that sets up, okay? Can we lick the spoon? Uh, yes, you can lick the spoon. Once you're all done, you can lick the spoon. And then I would go ahead and set it in the fridge so you can, because you guys are going to want to eat this sooner rather than later. So why not speed up the process a little bit and put that in the refrigerator, okay? So there we go. I'm going to set that aside. Clean up my block that I dropped there. And you can lick your spoon. You can lick your cup. You can um, set that aside. Wipe your hands off. And we've given you this card. Remember we talked about with all the purple on it? That is our chocolate from box. Okay? So you remember on the on the trolley, on the train, on the treat trolley, the chocolate frog came in a beautiful box with purple and gold, and the chocolate frog was inside. Okay, so you have a beautiful purple and gold box that you can cut and fold to hold your chocolate frog when it cools off, and you can and um, present that to your parents or siblings and show them what you did if you can resist the urge to eat it before you get that far, okay? So, uh, let's grab my pieces because I pre-cut this part so that we can get a little bit of a head start here on camera. So, uh, yeah, that's the next one, Anthony. We'll get to that next. But you have your, um, there's mine. You have your jelly bean chart, your jelly beans. That's something you can eat later too, okay? So you can enjoy, play the, the birdie bots. Let's see how brave you guys are. because You know some of these flavors. Read them off. Earwax. That, <laughs> how how um, appetizing does that sound this morning, guys? Um, yeah, good. Earthworms, yeah. dirt, dirt, let's say, um, but then you have some things thrown in like cherry and blueberry, but there's black pepper and rotten egg. So you guys got a few birdie box there and a flavor chart so you can see what you got there. But right now, we want our purple box for our chocolate frog. So go ahead, grab your scissors out of your arts and crafts bag, okay? And I went ahead and cut this out so you can see the two big pieces you're going to end up with. So this will be the base of our box, this purple, um, this purple pentagon here. This is going to be the base of our box. And then this with that says chocolate frog, that's going to be the lid, okay? Um, you can use tape or you can use your glue stick. Those are the two easiest ones to work with for this activity. And you will simply follow the instructions to fold. So if you look at the base of your box, and remember, if you have trouble with this, you just go back and start up the video again, and you can rewind at any time and, and see how this is done. So if you look at the in the inner shape of the bottom, we have that purple pentagon. We're going to fold right along all of those lines so that we make that pentagon shape for the base of our box. So this is what we're starting with, and this is what we're ending with here. So we're just going to fold each one of those down and crease along the line. Fold and crease, fold and crease, and just work your way around. 
The Pentagon has five sides. Get that right along the line. Let me fix that one up. There we go. And if you don't quite like your fold, unfold it. You can refold it again and get a cleaner line. There we go. That's better. All right. So we get all five sides folded in there. And now you notice on this particular shape, you have white tabs sticking out. And these tabs allow us to glue them together. So at each tab, see the white tab sticking out? At each tab, I want you to fold the white in so that you make a crease where the white meets the purple. But fold it in, okay? So I'm gonna go around and fold all five tabs in. There we go. Fold all five white tabs in. So you only see the purple on the outside. Okay. So now we can take our glue stick and smear that on to the white tab. Only on the white tabs. Ignore the part, the big one where it says place glue here. Don't do that one just yet. Just do the white tabs for now. Get these scooped up a bit. Get them all? I got them all. Okay. So then you can go around and you're going to. Place the white tab under the neighboring side so that you get a way to hold the box together, okay? So that's what we're doing here is we just want to be able to hold our, the base of our box together. So you're gluing these side tabs so that your box stays upright, the box sides stay upright, okay? Go. Okay. So now you see my pentagon on the bottom. And if you look from the sides, you can see that all of my sides are folded upright. And I have a container that I can put my frog in when he's cool and ready. So the top of the box is a little more complicated. So I wanted to start with that second. That's why I said, wait, don't put our glue here yet because it's gonna be easier to glue that together after it's folded rather than having to deal with folding this while the flap is attached. So take this shape that you have left over, Cut the tab, so you have one white tab on the end that looks just like the ones that were on the purple sides of the base of the box. And then we have these triangular and trapezoidal tabs here. So we wanna do the same thing. Fold along the white, fold the white under, so you don't see it anymore. Okay, give that a little crease. All right, and then you can Pull it back out. You just need to know that you've got it creased there so it allows the paper to fold. You also want to fold along the black lines. So if you look at this triangle here and then the one that starts over here, there's a line on the purple sides in between. You're going to want to give that a little fold right along the black line. So crease along the black line because that's what's going to allow us to wrap this shape, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and fold along that purple line so that both of these three triangles on the end can now fold in, all right? Then, if you look closely at the lid, 
where it says Honeydukes Chocolate Frog, you can see that this is really five triangles. A pentagon has five sides, and we're turning, we're taking this pentagon base and we're almost making a little pyramid with it. So we need five triangles to make our pyramid that's going to give us the, the dome-like appearance, or the pyramidal appearance of the top of the box to allow space for the frog to stick up because he is a three-dimensional object. He needs some height there. So you're going to fold along those black lines that go faintly through the Honeyduke's chocolate frog lettering. Look closely and you'll see it probably more so on the yellow. So define your triangles there. There we go. And on this side. Okay. It's our origami for the morning. And fold your tabs. Again, we want all the white folded underneath and creased, and then you can pop it back out. Same thing for this triangle on the side. Fold it underneath and then pop it back up. But that's going to give you a way to adhere the sides to one another and give it some stiffness. So now, as I've got these folds made, let's fold where the purple meets the gold. So there's a black line there if you look closely. You can fold where the purple meets the gold. Okay, so just go along and you'll fold those straight lines. That's going to allow the top to really wrap around the base and hold it securely. Here we go. Last two over here. And final fold. Okay, here we go, guys. Now, now that all your folds are made, you'll notice that it kind of tells you what it needs to be here. And you can fold it in to this shape and then come back and use your glue stick to glue your tabs and secure it. So everywhere there's white, that is where you'll glue. I would start below where it says chocolate frog and do those two first. Do the triangle, do the trapezoid there. Get those secure first. And so they just go under the neighboring triangle. Get good adhesion there, press, press those together. So your gummy glue can work its magic. Go, press down. Okay, and then do this next triangle and that will hold the front of your box together. Front of the top anyway. You can go ahead and do these two at the same time. So get that front tab and get the triangle at the top. Now, squeeze those together. And I think it's cute that it says 70% finest croco um, instead of just cocoa since it's a frog that croaks. All right, so once you squeeze there, you should have a nicely shaped lid you have a nicely shaped base to allow the box to hinge this tab, this purple tab that was right over where it says chocolate frog. This one is free. You notice we didn't have white tabs to attach to that. That's going to make our hinge. So now is when we go back to the base of our box and where it says place glue here, we're going to do just that. So hold that firmly, smear your glue along right where it says place glue here. Get that white 
all glued up. And now you can take this free flap that doesn't have the tabs, hold the, the tabs holding the um, sides down. That's going to create our hinge lid. And you're gonna place that just over the white portion. So it's not gonna go all the way down to the bottom of the box, just over the white portion, that's our overlap. Okay, and press those together from the inside. I like to use my thumb and on the inside, my fingers on the outside, give that a good squeeze. And you have a hinged lid that's going to open and close like a frog's mouth, okay? All right, so that is your chocolate frog box. I wanted to make sure we had time to go through that one because I know it was a little complicated. All right, so now you guys um, got some folding in. We're gonna do some more folding for our next activity. I don't need the glue stick for this, so I can put that away. But I'm gonna pull out my markers because you, you'll want your markers or colored pencils, something that you can use to write with, and you may want them to be colorful just because that's fun. All right. And oh, I wanted to mention also. I did it. Oh, very nice. Great box. That came out beautiful. I wanted to mention that when you're done with your plastic frog, and you put them in your box, or you put them in your belly, whichever happens first, you can wash out this mold and use it to make a plaster frog. So there is some plaster of Paris in here that you can mix with water. You just slowly add water and stir, add water and stir it. So if, it's, if you have a full portion cup of plaster, you can um, dump that into a bowl, and this you'll do later when your mold is clean. You can fill your portion cup with water. It's usually about a one-to-one -one ratio, and just slowly add the water and stir as you go. And plaster of Paris is cool because it will um, be like a thick liquid that you can pour into the mold, but if you leave that for about 20, 30 minutes, you will have a firm, it will, it will look almost like a little piece of ceramic, okay? So you will have a, a small plaster frog from your mold that you can use. You can even paint that later. So that'll be a fun thing, or use your markers to color that. The plaster of Paris will come out white, and it will take color well. So next activity is our pocket solar system, and this is Lots of folding, guys. Lots of folding in this one. I'm gonna give myself some space because we're gonna need it. Because you have a really long, I'm gonna set my Birdie Bots um, Every Flavor Beans aside because I don't need those right now. This treat bag that you got, that was, if you wanted to put your, if you are so kind and generous as to share your chocolate frog with someone, you can put it in a lovely little bag there and keep it protected and yep. safe from um, the air yes. and uh, hungry ants. So you yes. could try, put your whole um, box in there with your frog inside and use the twist tie to tie that up, okay? Yes, All sir. right. Yes. So now for your packet solar system, you want the bag that has just, it's just a roll of paper a really long roll of paper. So this is adding machine tape. And they kind of, it looks like a big calculator, but it spits out the paper with the numbers on it as we go. Yes, Anthony, what's your question, sweetie? Oh, uh, what do we do with this? Oh, that's for Friday. That's for Friday. That's your mandrake cake for Friday. All right. So, See this really long piece of paper? This is our pocket solar system. So get your bag that has a really long piece of skinny paper. This is what we're doing next. Okay. And you have one 
the stacks as we go. Once you pull this out, the very first thing you're going to find, I don't know if your bag has a name on it. Um, it says pocket stroller or roller. System. Pocket roller system, good. Okay, so pocket roller system, excellent. And it has the direction sheet as well as the long roll of paper. And that's it. So this is it. I've got it kind of folded in half just so you can see how long it is. So it says pocket solar system. Pull that out. On one end, you're going to write or draw the sun. Okay. So I'm going to do. The sun at one end. No. Don't know if you can see very well the yellow. Probably should use a darker pen, but we'll reinforce this a little bit so that you all can see it as well. I am just doing my sun, the star at the center of our solar system, at the end. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you make it look like. And honestly, you can just write, um, no, there we go, got it for focus. You can just write sun, okay? So that needs to be at one end. So I wrote sun. And at the other end, this is the Kuiper belt. I'm going to use black for this one, or oh, maybe this is not okay. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. All right. At the outer reaches of our solar system. Now, the next step is to take those two ends, put them together, and fold the whole piece in half, and crease it. So remember I said you'll be doing more folding and creasing this morning, here we go. Fold it and crease it, because this is marking the center point between the sun and the Kuiper belt. So we have Uranus's orbit. We're gonna draw here. Let's see, let's make this one. So we'll write Uranus, U-R-A-N-U-S, along that center crease, okay? And you can, you can draw a circle to represent the planet if you would like, okay? All right. And then your next step is to, let's see, so we've got Neptune and Saturn's orbits come next. So we take our, whoo, I'm just always being messy with this. We take our long strip. It's been rolled up for a long time already. We're gonna fold that in half again. So take your ends together. Here we go. Fold it in half. And then you're going to fold it in half one more time. So remember we started it folded in half once to make Uranus this orbit. Now we're folding it again and again. So here we go. Does everybody see where I am? So now my sheet is not nearly as long all folded up. Excellent. Perfect. So now you can unfold it. 
and you're going to draw on both creases. So we've got the sun here and Uranus here. We are going to come back and play Saturn. Let's do, I'm going to do orange for Saturn here. So I'm going to write Saturn. This is Saturn's orbit. And you can draw the planet if you would like. And since we all love Saturn's rings, I'm going to go ahead and do the rings as well. I accidentally ripped mine in half. Oh, that's okay. You can use your, your clear tape to put it back together, right? That'll come back together. This is just giving us relative distances, okay? So we drew Saturn on that first crease. We're gonna go to, so that's the next line up from the sun. Remember, Uranus is at the other end here because I still got mine folded in half. So I come one back from Uranus and that other crease that I made, that's where I'm putting Neptune, okay? So I'm gonna put Neptune right here. There we go. And we are now going to take and fold the sun up to meet Saturn. Okay? So just to meet that first crease where we marked Saturn, so making, marking the halfway point between the sun and Saturn, that is going to be Jupiter. So now I want to use my red to mark Jupiter. And let's see where we are. So fold the set up to meet Saturn, unfold and mark the, the, the orbit and place Jupiter. So now I'm going to Draw Jupiter here and okay. So there's my Jupiter. And our next step, step five, if you're following on your instruction sheet, is the asteroid belt. So now we mark where so we fold the sun up to meet Jupiter to mark the halfway point between those two, and that is the asteroid belt, okay? So I'm going to put lots of little asteroids there and label that asteroid belt, okay? And we want to mark Mars, the, the red planet, okay? So, we are going to take and fold the sun to meet the asteroid belt. So we're going halfway between the sun and the asteroid belt. Okay, halfway between the sun and the asteroid belt. And mark that crease so you can see your point. Now I'm placing Mars. Okay, Mars, the red planet here. This is going to be tricky because now they're much closer together. So we did step six with Mars orbit. Now we're doing Mercury, Venus, and Earth. So you have to fold the sun to Mars. Okay. And then fold it in half again to take the very end, the folded end now where you folded the sun in half and fold that up to meet Mar Mars orbit as well. So you have a few different lines on here. Unfold that and look at your creases. And this is going to label where Mercury, Venus, and Earth are in that order coming from the sun, okay? So we're doing 
Mercury on that first line, then Venus on the next, and then the blue planet, Earth. Okay, and you can label those as well. Mercury, Venus, Earth on those three little lines that you just made. And then we are complete. So you can go back and add other things like spacecraft exploring the planet, some of the moons of Jupiter, other points of interest you might want to add. But when you unfold that, there you go. Mr. Matt's going to help me and give you the scale here. So starting at this end, look at how dense that is. So starting with the sun, we've got Mercury, relatively speaking, very close. Okay. And then um, Venus and Earth and then Mars. And then we've got the asteroid belt. And then Jupiter's further out. Even further out than that, we have Saturn. And then you've got quite a lot of distance between Saturn and Neptune. Look at all of that. And then between Neptune and Uranus. And then we go all the way out to the Kuiper Belt, to the outer edges of our solar system. And you've got a whole lot of, of immense space there. Okay? So relatively speaking, look at how close together we are where we're closer to the sun and how much further away things are. So this is why we talk about the distant planets, right? Okay, guys, I know we're about to, to cut off here, so I hope that you had lots of fun. Don't forget to put your chocolate frog in the fridge so that you can chill them and enjoy them later and um, clean up after yourself. Okay, guys? Okay. Thank we you. So we will, um, you've got um, so lots of, Lots of fun to, um, to work on things from home. Um, and then you are joining your teachers at 1.30 this afternoon, okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget about attendance, guys. Don't forget attendance. I was waiting for that, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you.